Can you repeat that again? I think these are the last packets of water in the United States. So we better hurry up. <laughs> all right, well, I'm gonna get them all. Good morning, it's 6 a.m. My wife and I are here at Kroger's because what used to be a 24 hours a day, seven days a week store has now closed due to uh, COVID-19. And the first thing we see when we're walking in is a lady walking out with like two huge bags of uh, toilet paper. So that, that's how this is about to get started here. So you're coming along with us on our 6 a.m. Kroger run to prepare for a potential lockdown. Enjoy. Babe, since you since you woke me up, I'm, I have to make this fun. All right, so I'm gonna make a whole vlog out of this. Okay. Can we get the stuff that are gonna run out quickly? Like. Like water and TV. Yes. All right, let's do that first. Right, hold on. With these bananas. Okay, a little green. Eh. I'll have to sit on the counter for a couple days, but that's fine. <laughs> All right. So between us. I personally don't have a problem with drinking out of the, t the, the tap. So why are we getting these waters then? Because she has this extreme fear of drinking water from the fountain, even though, I don't know, we wash our food, we wash our hands from that same fountain. And at some point that water goes into our system some way or another. So let's go get that filter. And we're, we're actually, we're actually stocking up because I, I think, I think the possibility of a lockdown is, is actually, is actually pretty real. So the only reason I say that, I know Italy didn't think that was a thing and neither did Spain think that was a thing. And well, look, look at where they're at now. Papel de baño. Those are the what? The last two. America. <laughs> but it, wait, wait, babe, is this soft though? Yeah, you know where this is gonna go? Oh, that's soft. That's nice. Oh, yeah, that's really nice. That's comfy. When it comes to papel de baño, uh, I make sure that, that what I'm putting and what I'm wiping with is, is nice, you know? I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be wiping with something so thin, I'm practically using my own hand. And also, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to be uh, wiping something that feels like sandpaper either. So I had to teach my wife that, hey, I've got a particular taste in toilet paper. And she's finally come to accept that, that I do open up the bags. I do feel it before I, <laughs> Uh, before I buy it. And if it's not up to par, sorry, you know, sorry, you lost my business, but it is what it is. They make them soft for a reason. So I go for the, the most soft and the most comfy. So this, this toilet paper, this is, I promise, only this one's for us. These two are for just in case anyone at our church may need it. And so we're just getting extra so they have, you know, some others can't get it right now. So we're, we're thinking more for the masses, not for us. So chill out. So remember that meat we had on our list, babe? Yeah. Um, Good thing I, had two. I 
think everyone was way ahead of us. The paper, meat, no bagels. <sighs> There's got to be bagels. I have to get bagels. Um, no bread at all. There's all the bread missing. At least, well, there's all these. But my goodness, can we just talk about being out? Really? You're over there filming and you need to take care of the car? Because I heard stories that people take bottles of water. Yeah, you know what? I got the power of Christ. <laughs> Oh, 25 minutes later, we are pretty much stocked up. Pretty happy with where we're at. We'll just, we'll just have to see. Got something. Dog food, not. <laughs> She's been wanting a dog for so long and I'm definitely telling her, nope. Cause I don't feel like paying extra for rent on the house we're renting at. And also, I just don't really like dogs. I'm a cat guy. Why am I a cat guy? Well, personally, they're just independent. They kind of keep to themselves. You don't really need to give them too much attention. And if you do, they'll usually probably scratch you. So, me personally, I, I think that's just, you know, a nice mutual relationship there. We got sandwich meat, chicken, and ground beef. Could not find. I'm gonna have to run to Walmart for that. And yeah, I think pretty good. Pretty good. Damage today 142. Let's scan that nice old card, see what we save. Thank you. Wow. So I saved $5. It's alright. Let's pay for it. Alright, I would call that pretty successful. However, we are missing chicken and beef. We need to stock up on some frozen stuff. And maybe you're gonna have to learn to cook during this time, okay? No more going out to eat. And there's no point in buying all this stuff if we never, never cook it. So we're gonna do a quick uh, Walmart run and uh, we'll see y'all there. Ah, we found a meat. So, this will be good for a little bit. She had to go get her cucumbers. How do you say cucumbers in Spanish? What I keep saying is it's not an elote. <laughs> not elote. It's a... Cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are now in the house. About to unload uh, all our groceries here, and uh, and then we get to do the fun part on somehow organizing everything we just bought, which we normally don't buy this month, into our little fridge. So we'll see how that goes. Baby, successful trip. Mm -hmm. I'm 
Finished everything. 7.40 in the morning, started right at six o'clock. I think we can call it a, call it a day. All right. So obviously a pretty successful morning. Um, I, I'd like to think so of uh, getting some things done, but really on a, like in a, a serious note, um, I do want to ask you all, you know, what are you doing to prepare for a potential, you know, lockdown? Um, I think the possibility is very real of it. If, you know, big countries like Italy and Spain had to go through lockdown, there's no real reason why the United States wouldn't go through one. I hope it doesn't uh, be the case, but it, it, only, it really makes you think, as I was, you know, shopping around and talking with my wife, um, it's nice to live in a, a state of prosperity, right? When when you can always, you know, go and get something. Uh, personally, my philosophy is just buy what you need. Um, and I just, I like to keep it that way. <clears throat> For me, it's not a problem to go to the stores, store multiple times a week just to, you know, buy the stuff we're actually going to eat that week. But now that we've kind of, you know, a little bit stocked up just in case of a possibility there could be, you know, a 10 to 14 day lockdown. Um, really just kind of puts in perspective that when you're actually really needing on things and you can't find those things, how like, you know, it, it just gets you a little worried. But, you know, I was, uh, you know, pastor preached a really great message yesterday about filling the oil in your lamp. And it was all about during these times when the Bible says there would be famines that would come, there would be pestilence that would show, and these would be the signs of that, uh, you know, Jesus is coming for his church. And um, I think one of the verses that really stood out to me personally was, was Matthew 24, 32 and 4, and it says, Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches, branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things, right, the famines, the pestilence, the earthquakes, nations against nations, and, and I know this isn't the first time this has happened in history, right? The Black Plague happened. That could have been a great time for Jesus to return. World War II came. That would have been a great time for Jesus to come. But it says, when you see all these things, right, all happening, earthquakes, we've got wars, now this huge pestilence that could, you know, uh, experts are saying, again, experts, right, are saying between 100 and 140 million people could be infected of this disease. That's when you, you can know his return is very near, right at the door. And it says in verse 37, when the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's days. In those days before the flood, people were enjoying banquets and partings and weddings right up to the time Noah entered the boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away to get serious um, about serving Christ, about, you know, being better in, in your personal life. I need to do better. My wife needs to do better. Our whole church body needs to do better. But if you're not a Christian now, uh, now would be a really great time because um, it could happen. And the consequences of not choosing to be a Christian versus, uh, versus being a Christian is an, an eternal one. One where you're eternally spent in heaven or one where you're eternally spent um, in hell. And if you don't believe what hell looks like, find a Bible, go to Google, type in hell verses, and there will be plenty of scripture uh, to tell you what hell is like, but there's also plenty that tells you what heaven is like, and if you were to choose the two, right, if you were to choose, um, you know, Cambridge, right, uh, Cambridge, Great Britain, or you were to choose, uh, you know, backcountry Ghana, Africa, where if nothing's there, where nothing is there, desert land, you know, which would you choose? The answer is obvious. And just as in the case, if you knew what heaven looked like, and if you knew what hell looked like, you would obviously choose heaven. Now it's all about finding that path to get there. So again, let me know what Bible verses have spoken out to you. 
if if you are a Christian during these during these times of COVID nineteen and potential lockdown for the United States uh, as we're speaking. And also, how are you preparing for the lockdown if there happens to be one? So again, my name is Mario. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, vlog this morning. We've uh, glad that you've uh, you know spent your time this morning just to watch a few minutes of our lives. And so you know we'll see how it goes. And praying for every single one of you and your families um, that you uh, make it through this uh, you know uncertain time. God bless.